Hello everyone and welcome back. Today I'm going to be showing you everything you need to know to get started using World Edit. World Edit is a very extensive plugin and one that pretty much every big Minecraft server build has used. For example, if there's a server spawn that you just absolutely love, chances are World Edit was used in that spawn in some way. It is great for mega builds. It is great for just huge, incredible projects and uh, really is like a guaranteed and necessary tool if you're wanting to build something Something huge very very quick in Minecraft so here we are on the world edit download page if you're wanting to install this plugin on your server here it is this is the download page and it is in the description if you want to see how to do this on an apex Minecraft hosting server we have a very very easy and in-depth tutorial that shows you exactly how to add world edit to your server and that is linked in the description down below as well now once you have this on your server it's pretty simple to start configuring it so if we minimize our browser here we are in FileZilla logged into our apex server if we go into the plugins folder here we do have world edit as you can see the world edit Folder. World Edit is already on our server. If we open up the World Edit folder, here's the config file. So we can drag the config file over to our desktop and then we're going to open this up with Atom. This is my preferred text editor. It's completely free and linked in the description. However, you can use any text editor that you so choose. It, it really doesn't matter. So once we're in here, there are some things that you want to look at. So the max blocks changed. This can really help with lag. So for example, if you set this to like 10,000, right? So the maximum blocks that you can change are 10,000. That's going to make it to where if someone tries to world edit more than 10,000 blocks, it is going to not let that happen. It's just gonna, just gonna say no. But the thing is, a lot of times you do wanna edit more than 10,000 blocks, you do wanna do big edits. So unless you're giving world edit to everyone in your server, I wouldn't recommend setting these as uh, you know any maxes or defaults or anything like that in here. However, if you are gonna give world edit to everyone in your server, then probably come in here and set some stuff. Because world edit, while it is pretty good, it can crash servers if you're editing five million blocks or 10 million blocks, that's just too much. And it can like crash the server and lag things and things like that. So these are maximums that are very helpful if you're giving everyone more edit. However, if it's just you and your admins, you're fine there. As far as disallowed blocks go, this is going to be bypassed by anyone who has op anyway, but it is cool to go through here and like take out some stuff that could be used to grief. Specifically things like beds. If you world in a bunch of beds in the end, for example, and then go through and sleep in them, it's very, very easy to grief. You could say take out TNT here. Bedrock is another good example. Don't want anybody bedrock, like world editing in bedrock everywhere. So you can go down through those and add any more that you want. These are just using standard Minecraft item IDs. So you can check out our link in the description to see what all of those item IDs are. Use inventory. Now, if you are giving everyone on your server world edit and you don't want them to be able to world edit a ton of blocks in, you can make it use their inventory. So that means it's only going to use blocks that are in their inventory. And that is actually very, very helpful and something that so many servers do in order to allow players to use world edit. It only uses the stuff in their inventory. And with that, it's good to go. Ops, people who are opt on the server, will bypass this. So that is a word of warning. Logging commands, do you want world edit to log everything? If you're giving people like the ability to use world edit on your server, it's probably a good idea to log everything. Otherwise, I wouldn't, there's no real need to do that. So you can go ahead and leave that false unless you're giving it to everybody. The super pickaxe is a really, really cool feature of world edit that basically just adds in a incredibly overpowered pickaxe. You can either um, allow that to drop items or not and whether it'll drop many items or not. Um, snapshots and basically everything else can be changed here the only thing you might want to change is the wand item and once we jump in game you'll see what i mean but by default that is a wooden axe you can change it to whatever you want but i would leave it as a wooden axe because pretty much everybody knows that world edit is used with a wooden axe so that is basically everything in the world at a config you want to just go ahead and save this you can upload it to your server back here if you want but now it's time for us to go ahead and move in game because this is really where everything is going to be done with world edit. I mean, the config is cool and, and you do need to look at the config of all the plugins on your server. However, most of the stuff you're gonna be doing with world edit is going to be right here in game. So the last thing you mentioned in that config was the world edit wand. And that is what's going to be controlling world edit in game here is the world edit wand. And to get one of those do slash slash W A N D slash slash wand and hit enter. And there it is. We have the wooden axe, which is the world edit wand. Now with this world edit wand, we need to make a selection. So I'm going to go ahead and, and make like a little small house here for us to kind of use for the basis of this tutorial. 
So there is our little house for basically the purpose of this tutorial. We're gonna be doing everything that we do to this house because why not? We need something visual here to kind of represent it. So nothing, nothing, nothing special about it, just empty inside. But what we need to do if let's say we just wanted to remove this house entirely or move it to another location is select it. So we've got our wand in our hand. Again, that was slash slash wand to do that. Now, to select the house and move it, we need to select each corner. So we select right here by clicking, right clicking right here. And as you can see, first position set. So right clicking right there. And then we need to do the second position. So I would actually recommend doing this with fly on if you have slash fly on your server with essentials or in creative, just so you can like easier get up into like these corners and stuff like that because you need to do up in the air if you're doing this other corner so how would you how would you select this though because we want to get the roof right and if we select like right here right so we've selected that as our first position come over here and then left click to select this with our second position so you're right and left clicking right right click for the first position and left click for the second position right like so and there you go now if we wanted to remove this house we would do slash slash cut but it didn't remove the entire house. So how would we get that top part there, even though it's in the center? Well, let me go ahead and do slash slash undo to undo that. And what we wanna do is come right here on this corner, right? And then just do slash slash up, space, and then however many blocks you wanna go up. I'm gonna go up five because I, I know that's safe. And there we go. Now, right, we can left click here for our first position, come over here, right click for our second position. And this time, if we do slash slash cut, it removes the entire build. Nevertheless, what if you don't want to remove this build? What if you just want to move it, right? You want to copy it and you want to paste it somewhere else. Well, after you've made your selection, just go ahead and do slash slash copy, right? And then that, as you can see, 792 blocks were copied. Now here's the thing. If we just paste this, like if we come over here and do slash slash paste, it's going to paste it in the same relative direction. So if you want to make sure you're very specific, you need to make sure you're copying from the correct place. So let's go ahead and undo this. Let's again make a selection here. We're going to first position there and then come over here and do our second position. And then now I'm gonna copy this from looking right at the front door. So I'm gonna copy it right here. So slash slash copy. And then let's say we wanna paste this just right around. So we're gonna turn around, walk over to here. We want the front door to be right here. So we're gonna do slash slash paste. And right like so, it'll paste it. Ugh right with us looking at the front door. Now, that's not what we wanted, right? We wanted it to paste looking that way. Why did it do that? Because clipboards are relative, right? They put it exactly where it was copied. If you copied it and it was facing this way, it's going to face that way when you paste it, unless you rotate it. So after you make your copy, what you wanna do is rotate it. And to do that, do slash slash rotate, and then the degrees you wanna rotate it. In this case, I think it would be would it be 90 degrees? Yeah, I think it would be 90 degrees, but it might be 180. So now that we've done that, we can go ahead and copy this block. I wanna put the stairs there because we were standing on stairs when we copied it. And now we can do slash slash paste. And okay, so we need to do 90 degrees again. So undo is actually 180 degrees, but since it's rotated 90 already, we wanna rotate it an additional 90 degrees. And finally, we can do paste and it will be in the right direction, right? There we go. So that might have seemed complicated, but all we did there was just make our selection, right? And then we copied it, and then we did slash slash rotate, and then we should have done 180 to completely flip it, and then slash slash paste. The biggest thing you need to remember is make your copy exactly where you want your paste to be, right? So if you wanna paste it looking right at the front door, do that. If you wanna get it right at the corner, you can do that. But just know that whenever you paste it, you'll be standing in the exact same position that you were when you copied it. It's very, very important and something that nobody mentions in World Edit, but it is worth mentioning here. Now you've been seeing me do the undo command quite a bit here. So let's say we did paste this and we didn't like it. We could do slash slash undo. But what if we're like, well, actually I did kind of like it. Slash slash redo works as well. So you've got slash slash undo and slash slash redo. Pretty simple and pretty easy. Now, one of the things you'll notice is what if you wanted to like delete everything all the way down to the bedrock, right? That would be kind of difficult, it seems, with World Edit because I mean, that's just a lot of digging down to bedrock. Well, you don't have to do that. So let's go ahead and select this house. We're gonna right click there and then come over to our glass block and left click there. And then we would just wanna do slash slash expand, right? So slash slash expand and then vert. V-E-R-T. And what that's gonna do is expand it vertically from world height all the way down to bedrock. 
hit enter. And now if we cut this or remove it so we can do slash slash cut, it will remove everything all the way down to bedrock and even the bedrock. So you'll need to replace that world or uh, that bedrock down there, but you can do that with world edit. Now, if we don't like that, we can undo it. And let's say we, we did like it, we can redo it, right? So I'm gonna leave that there because I like that house. So now that we've got that, what if we wanted to just uh, make a schematic of this house so we could use it over and over and over and over again? Well, let's go ahead and do that. So we again want to select the house, which is the same way we're going to first position here with right click or left click, excuse me, second position over here with left click. Boom. There we go. So we made a selection of that. Now we need to copy the house. And again, you want to stand exactly where you want the house to paste. So I'm going to stand right here and we're going to do slash slash copy right like so and now we need to save this now to save it it is a pretty simple thing so you want to do slash slash s c h e m slash slash skim or you can do slash slash schematic either one works and then space and then you want to do save and then you want to name this whatever you want to name it i'm just going to name it house right but you can name this schematic whatever you want and then hit enter so now the house is saved. And if we go ahead and copy something else, I'll just copy this right here, right? No longer can we paste this house, right? If we, if we do slash slash paste, it's gonna throw some sand somewhere random. I don't, I don't even know where it went, but there's no house anywhere. So what if we wanna get this house back? Well, we can load it from the schematic we just saved. So we can do slash slash skim, S-C-H-E-M, and then we wanna do load, and then the name of the schematic. In our case, that was house. So as you can see, house is loaded, paste it with slash slash paste. So now if we come over here, let's say we wanted another house right here, we can do slash slash paste. And boom, there is the house. Now again, it's, it's right here and we need to rotate it. So undo, remember that rotate command? So we wanna do slash slash rotate. And this time we do wanna do 90 degrees. And then we can come right here and now, do slash slash paste and our schematic is pasted right like so. Pretty easy, pretty quick, and very simple to use schematics to do stuff. And this is actually very helpful if someone else has a schematic, you can add it to your server. So let's go ahead, go back to FileZilla and then where we can add or edit our config and I'll show you schematics there. So switching back over here, we can come back into this and if I refresh this page, you will see schematics has now appeared. We now have a schematics folder. Double click on that and in here there is the house.skim file. If you have other schematics, you'll just drop them right here into the schematics file and load them the same way. Slash skim space load and then the name of whatever the schematic is in here. This one's house, you could have boat, you could have whatever, spawn, whatever you want to do, you can do it here and you can actually back up as big as you want. For example, an entire spawn on a server could be backed up with a schematic. That way if something does happen, you can easily refresh it with a schematic. So nevertheless, let's go ahead and jump back in game to continue with more of the features of World Edit. Now, one cool feature of World Edit, let me go ahead and make it daytime, is the ability to set a block. So let's say this right here, right here. You don't want this to be sand behind this. You want to turn this into grass. So make your selection. Just like always, we're going to left click for position one and then right click for position two. And now instead of doing copy or cut or something like that, we're going to do slash slash set. And then you want to name the block you're going to set. Again, in the description below, we have a list of all of the block IDs for Minecraft that you can come here and use. And in this case, we're going to do a grass block. So we're going to do grass underscore block and hit enter. And boom, now all of that sand is turned into a grass block. Pretty simple stuff. Now that's easy for changing one material to another, but let's say you had like some random, I don't know, cobblestone stairs in here, for example, right? So we've got these random cobblestone stairs, right? Like so. And you don't want to change the grass. You like the grass as is, but you want to change the cobblestone stairs to, I don't know, a quartz block. Well, go ahead and make your selection, selecting all of the cobblestone stairs. And this time we're not going to set those. We're going to do slash slash replace. And then you want to do with your original block in this place, it's going to be cobblestone stairs, but it can be whatever you want, right? So cobblestone stairs. And then you want to do your second block, which is going to be quartz underscore block. Hit enter and boom, all of those cobblestone stairs have now became quartz block, but the grass around it's not affected. On the same token, if we wanted to now change the grass, but not the quartz block in that same selection, we would do slash slash replace. 
and then we would do a grass block because that's what we're changing now. And we can change all that grass block to, I don't know, cobblestone stairs or let's just do cobblestone. So to cobblestone. And now, as you can see, we've changed all the grass, but we haven't affected the quartz blocks at all. That is a very, very helpful command. If let's say there's a bunch of, you know, mob spawners on your server or a bunch of observers or something like that, and you just want to replace the observers, you don't want to affect anything else around it, you can change that. You can even do air. So let's say we want to change all of the cobblestone in this selection now to air. So we can do cobblestone, air, boom, and it will remove them. They're gone and they're no longer on the server at all. So pretty simple stuff. You can actually do that with air as well. So now if we want to take the air and replace the air with cobblestone, we can do that. See, so if you want to just remove a block, air is an option to just remove the block and get rid of it if you don't want to use cut or you want to replace it. So that kind of gives you a little overview of world edit. Now there are tons of world edit commands. I mean, tons of them. And because of that, we have a link in the description down below that will take you to right here, which is the complete list of world edit commands. I mean, as you can see, there are tons of them. We just scratched the surface here. You basically have a intro into world edit. And that's kind of what we wanted to accomplish with this tutorial. It's an intro. But if you want to get more in depth with it and learn about everything, I mean, World Edit has everything from the ability to make spheres and circles and things like that to even just simply replace stuff, as you saw in game. So there is tons of different commands here. And then in game, if you do need help, you can come over into the game and do slash World Edit and then space help and it will give you a list of different commands in game here. As you can see, there are four different pages of them, but you can go through those in game if you don't wanna use this resource here. Nevertheless, we hope this tutorial helped you out. If it did, give it a thumbs up and enjoy using World Edit on your server. Let us know if you have any questions in the comments down below. Thanks for watching.